we're extremely excited about opening up next week. Um, we've had a great fall and early spring. Uh, players have put in a tremendous amount of effort. Uh, they've come together as a group. Uh, it's probably as close to the club as we've had in a long time. And uh, they've pushed one another. Uh, and I think we really truly have been able to put together some pitching depth and some depth position player wise, young and more experienced players. And uh, so we're looking forward to, to getting a chance to compete against outside competition and, and see where we go from there. You talk about that pitching depth. Uh, just talk about where things kind of have settled and, and what you look, do you think that uh, weekend will look like? <laughs> yeah, we're, still, we're still a little bit unsure uh, exactly what the weekend will look like um, because we do have some options for, for the weekend and midweek. You know, I, I certainly think uh, Royalty will start Friday and um, probably sharp Saturday. And then Sunday we may piggyback a couple starters and then do the same thing Tuesday up at Chapel Hill uh, with a couple different starters and then roll to the bullpen behind each one of those. Um, but with Royalty, Sharp, Bruno, Beeler, Gorham, um, you know, a chance of Justin Walker or uh, – Morgan being available from the left side. So we have some options uh, on the starting piece, but the good thing is several of those same pitchers uh, can certainly help us out of the bullpen as well. On the flip side, that you return just two starters to that lineup. Just talk about one to nine where it's going to be. Yeah, you know, that's really, I mean, we're, we're narrowing it down. Um, you know, I couldn't put a lineup together today uh, for opening day because uh, several players have have really started to come on and, and gain a feel for what they're doing and how they can help. Um, I think we have uh, certainly have some options, uh, whether we're looking at platooning right versus left, left versus right, or um, you know we feel like we need to be a little more solid defensively at a couple spots and. You know, we have some options there, or maybe a little better offensively in those couple spots. We have some options there, too. So, uh, you know, with, with Jeffers and Schaefer behind the plate and, and Zach Bridges is a, is a solid backup behind those guys. And, you know, you go over to first base, there's several different options there with Mason Byrne and, and uh, Levi and Zach Canada. And, you know, Canada can play on the other corner for us and play in the outfield for us. And, you know, in the infield, all the way around the infield with Angeli, Meadows, Jones, Weiss. Uh, you know, there's a solid group that, you know, we can we can make some changes and, and still feel really good about what we're doing. And then the depth we have in the outfield, uh, young versus uh, a little more experienced guys. Uh, most of them are all new, uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, the game doesn't change. and, and They've gained a feel for how we would like to play the game and how we want them to use their tools. Coach, how have you had to adjust to this season? You, know, you go from a senior heavy team to uh, just a core group of returners that have really made an impact uh, in the last season, in addition to uh, new additions to the coaching staff, your strength, your trainer. I mean, it's a, you know, kind of a facelift here going into the season. It, you know, it has been, but at the same time, it, it's, it's been a good change, too. Uh, it's been good for. Uh, myself and Coach Hood and Coach Williams and, and, and Coach Stott, who's now our director of ops, uh, to work in Chris Moore in the mix. And Chris has been really, really good working with Coach Hood and the hitters um, and doing a lot of individual and small group stuff, trying to, to allow players to, to figure some things out on their own, uh, to best use their abilities. And, uh, and I think we're seeing, uh, we're starting to see some progress that we felt like we would over time and um, you know it's we're just very fortunate and excited from a pitching side to to see some young arms that are competitive that have pushed the older guys and, and our transfers that have come in that want to be on the mound and and want to get out and compete We've certainly thrown, you know, our top 10, 11 guys have, have thrown a lot of strikes this fall, I mean, this, this spring, and uh, which hopefully bodes well. 
because I do think we'll play solid defensively behind them. Is that a uh, batting facility back there going to be blue when you were hitting and white when the <laughs> opponent team was hitting? Uh, I don't think it'll come into play. You know, it, it, from an offensive standpoint, it won't come into play. But, you know, defensively, there may be a throw that, you know, a certain time of the day that may be an issue. But, um, you know, it's. Uh, Hopefully the latter part of the spring, sometime April, we get a chance to go in and see what type of facility we do have, but it'll be a tremendous addition when it's finished. The schedule this year, there's only one week that you have two midweek games. Was that a conscious effort to try to schedule that, that way? Yes, yes. Uh, and we do every year, to be honest with you. It's so difficult to put a schedule together um, and match dates with teams that you can play midweek uh, and always be able to plug one game in midweek all the way through. Ideally, you know, you've got a 56 game schedule, you've got 14 weeks, three on a weekend, one midweek, that's 56. But uh, you also have exam week where you're not playing and then you have conflicted dates with other teams that you're trying to compete against. And, you know, sometimes it just unfolds where you do have three or four two game midweeks and that's tough. It's tough on the players. It doesn't matter whether it's here or any other program in the country. Uh, but you'll, if you talk to most coaches across the country, they'll tell you that, you know, they're trying their best to schedule one game in the middle of the week and that's it. Uh, and sometimes mid to late April, try to take a full week off where they don't have a midweek game to give guys bodies a break and give, their, give them a chance to recover a little bit and, and regroup for the back half. You've got a lot of returning staff pitching-wise and some new guys pitching. Last year it was the hitters that were the hot topic. This year it seems to be the pitchers. How are you handling that, given that the expectations, according to the CAA, are that you're the favorite to win the title? Uh, you know, that's where we want to be. Yeah, every year you, you open the year up in the fall and uh, guys are in their conditioning and lifting and, and skill work phase. And, you know, they're working to put themselves in a position where uh, we would like to be the favorites in the league. Um, it's a challenge throughout the course of the year. Uh, it's something that you can place out there in front of the players and continue to, to get them to work towards that uh, and understand that, yes, you know, you picked that way at the beginning of the year, but where are we going to be at the back end? And we prefer to be there at the back end as opposed to the front end, but it gives us something to shoot for throughout the course of the spring. and and lets them know that every day is important. What do you think about some of the young pitchers, particularly like Kevin Mintz and the staff? You know, Kevin, Kevin's going to be a, a, a very good college pitcher down the road. Um, you know, Kevin, along with some of our other young arms, may not be quite ready yet. And the good thing is this year, knock on wood, as long as we stay healthy, uh, they won't have to. Uh, because we do have uh, a number of players that are ready and prepared to go out and compete that are ahead of them right now, and which gives those younger arms a chance to continue to develop, gain strength, gain a feel for the college game by being on the side and, and talking and watching some of their, their teammates compete. And then down the road, uh, their turn comes around. Ryan Jeffers has been very good um, with our, not only with our catching core, but with the pitching staff. And, um, you know, David Schaefer has rolled in here as a grad transfer behind the plate. And, uh, you know, David has a lot of experience. And between the two of them, uh, along with Zach Bridges, and like I said, Zach's from a receiving standpoint, Zach's as good as those guys uh, and handles the pitching staff. So. They've taken on a leadership role in, in trying to give pitchers feedback each day uh, while they're catching their pins. And, and then they've done the same thing from an offensive standpoint and practice approach standpoint, just reminding players what's expected from, from phase to phase in practice to remain focused and let's stay locked in on what we're trying to get accomplished. Mason's been, uh, Mason's been much different this year now that he's settled in. He's been here a year. Um, 
he wants to be a very, very good player, uh, and he's put the work in and the time in to, to become that. And his communication skills on the field at game time and practice time have have improved tremendously. So you know, there's he's not afraid to talk with a second baseman or a shortstop uh, or the catcher or the pitcher, unlike last year where he was way too quiet. But uh, that's it, it's been fun to watch. Even the older guys continue to develop. Uh, you never know what you're gonna gonna get from junior college players. Uh, coming into a new situation. Uh, it's not a lot different than the freshmen besides the fact that they've had a chance to be on the field in the college game uh, for a year or two. They still are trying to get acclimated to this program and new teammates. And uh, But it, this group's been fun to work with and fun to watch. And Ben Fleming, our strength coach, has been phenomenal with his workouts and his routine with the, with the conditioning and the lifting program. And, it's brought the guys' uh, competitive nature out, and it's brought them together as a unit. The depth of the potential starting pitchers, how fun is it to see that competition between them? you got five guys who all think they can be your Friday night starter, essentially. And they, and they compete against each other every day. That's, that's the fun part for us to watch is, you know, when one goes out, uh, the other one's trying to, to do that much better. Um, the great thing is each one of those pitchers has the ability uh, not to press to, to get to that point, but to be able to, to relax and focus and, and stay on task and trust their, trust their delivery and trust their stuff. Uh, and that's why we feel like we do have five or six different pitchers that can start for us at any given time on any given day. Um, we haven't been in that position in a while. So, like I said, knock on wood, they stay healthy. And, uh, and it's not just the starters. Uh, there's some very, very good arms and, and competitive pitchers in the bullpen. You know, when you're looking at the back end with Austin Easter and Austin, Austin Warren and, and Clark Cota at the back end, and uh, you look in the middle, there's, you know, you got Luke and Levi Gazelle, and uh, depending on what we do with Walk and Morgan, and, we have a number of arms that are, that are very capable of going out middle innings, fourth, fifth, sixth, if we get in trouble early, going out and giving us two or three and turning it over to the next guy and move from there. The plus with the four game weeks and six, six different pitchers that can start for us, you know, it gives us a chance to piggyback some guys we have somebody there and available that can go if a starter gets in trouble early. You know, hopefully we get three or four out of that next guy. And if a starter gives us four or five, you know, we may be able to get it to the ninth and turn it over to, to Warren Easter or Coder.